Hi, in this video, I'll be doing a air conditioning compressor and uh, accumulator receiver dryer change. Gonna flush it. The um, compressor did lock up. Uh, so first steps will be to get the uh, get the air box uh, out of here and the serpentine belt. This is a E350 Ford van. Uh, that plywood is there just for uh, blocking the light um, so it wouldn't be shooting into the sun. Uh, anyhow, as big as this is, that compressor is sandwiched in between the cross member and the um, engine is bottom mount and the uh, accumulator is down in here. I've already got the parts. They appear to be correct. And so uh, we'll be starting on this, taking this off and then the belt, uh, battery cable, um, take the negative off, battery cable as well, and see what waits for us after that. So the top air box and the um, bottom splash guard, which would normally cover all of this up, have been removed. So next is the uh, idler tensioner for the serpentine belt. And I've already taken several um, pictures that show where the belt goes, even though there is a diagram on this one, um, just having the pictures is is helpful. I'll do the tensioner and uh, I'll see if I can get it from underneath here and get more leverage and get the belt off. And then we'll start looking at this compressor and the accumulator up top. Like I said, you can see it is very tight in there. The compressor is now loose and dangling and that so far so good. That wasn't all that hard, but um, I think I'm gonna take the uh, fan shroud. Um, I mean, I might be able to just loosen the fan shroud and work the compressor around it after I loosen the top lines. We'll, uh, we'll see, um, but I am prepared to do that. And, most times, if you just take the time to take something out of the way, um, it will save so much more time overall um, not being stubborn and trying to fight and work something through something if you just took it out of the way. So, uh, loosen some things up and go from there. So I have the top of the fan shroud loose, um, negative battery cable off, but um, always take that off first in a negative ground system. Um, in case you don't know, you put it on um, you put it on last and you take it off first because if you touch the sides with the wrench. Um, nothing will happen but when you do that with the positive and you hit uh, the body something that's connected to ground um, bad things happen so um, we're gonna have to take the battery out anyhow to get to the accumulator which is down in here all right so battery is obviously out notice the battery box um, is broken down there was still holding here I might take this out just it gives just a little bit more access and clearance so here's our pressure switch right here and here's the accumulator and I know there's I think two bolts on this side I don't know if there's anything on the other side uh, you know, like to think they made it um, to where it was serviceable and the only two you need to take are right there. Um, but we'll find out. All right, have the battery box out of the way. I'm gonna take this tube out for the washer fluid because um, it's 
I need more clearance for that. So that's just two bolts to take that out. I've got one still holding in, holding in there. Um, of course, the connector for the um, pressure switch. Um, you know, you never know with these things. You have to really look at it. You know, some you press in, some you lift up, and this was one you you lift up, and it was on the other side. So um, that was fun. So I'm gonna get this washer filler tube out of the way, loosen this. Then I can take the one bolt I just have sort of holding it in, the accumulator. Uh, this is this is loose. Um, the O-ring fell out as soon as I took it apart and it was crushed pretty bad. Um, so I've just got it back together um, so nothing loose gets in there and the cut down on moisture getting in there. Um, so let's undo this get this out, get the accumulator out, and then see what happens with, with this right here. Okay, so compressor is out. Um, it's not all that hard to get out. Um, if you just loosen the fan shroud top and bottom, um, you can move it around and scooch the compressor out to here. And there's a 10 millimeter uh, wrench size uh, bolt that holds the uh, high and low side manifold onto the uh, out of, uh, onto the compressor. Put on some safety glasses uh, and have a little catch basin uh, ready. Uh, you know, so when you tip it, you know, ultimately some is going to come out. Problem with this compressor is it had hardly any oil in it and we'll see that uh, quite a lot of shrapnel is uh, in the system so um, it is going to be quite the chore to try and blow all of this out but anyhow you know you loosen the bolts on the compressor uh, you slide it forward and um, then just watch it, it uh, be ready to catch um, I think both of these bolts, when you slide it forward, will will drop will drop out. Um, and this one back here, or is it one or two back here? One back here will just that one will just you can just pull that out. Um, you slide it forward. Have your lines undone up top so you have the flexibility of this and the shroud will move around and you just pull the compressor down to here undo the 10 millimeter bolt pop that off uh, see if you can drain whatever fluids in there um, and then just keep it um, tipped right side up pull it down and out and that's all there is to that it's not hard at all next the uh accumulator um, which was in here, as you know, um, just go ahead, use that, uh, special tool. So that's the first time, um, I done a modern system that uses those clips and, uh, spring loaded clips and clamps. Um, and you can make a tool if you don't have one. Let's see if I have my little homemade tool. Oh uh, yeah. Um, you can actually make, this is the inside of a um, Teflon tape ring, and you can make a release tool out of it. Um, I don't have the other, I don't have the set sitting here. Um, so here we can see, um, this. here's the orifice tube. So again, this is a 04, 2004 E350 with rear air conditioning. Here's the, uh, orifice tube going into the uh from the high line to the low line into the evaporator and you can see what happened here uh and that compressor was locked up and again i think it was because it just didn't put there wasn't enough oil in the oil in the system uh so need to change the Replace the compressor because it's just such fine, uh, small diameter tubing in that you're just never going to clean that out. Um, so, 
um, be replacing the condenser, uh, breaking these connections, blowing it out. I'm going to put some compressed air through it and blow backwards in the direction that uh, of flow uh, to try and not force things deeper into the system because maybe there was enough stuff in the way to catch a lot of it and just blow it backwards through. Um, I'm going to attempt to open the lines in the rear at the rear um, uh, evaporator all the way in the left rear corner uh, and blow there and see whether there's stuff in uh, that or not because there's, you know, what, like eight feet or more of plumbing, probably closer to ten in both directions, so like 20 feet of plumbing, it's in a lot of places for stuff to uh, get stuck. Now here's what little oil came out of the compressor, and here is, you can see all that nice metal uh, in there, uh, and it wasn't changed, uh, that long well actually it was 2013 uh, and it is 2022 so um, it's been on there a good long a good long time but still it probably did not do um, a really careful thorough job uh, so the new compressor appears to match up new accumulator appears to to match up so getting the condenser off and uh, blowing out the system is next yesterday opened up all the all the this is the rear ac on this e350 it's a 2004 e350 xl super duty with rear air so um We've got all of these long lines that run the entire length back and forth up to the front. Uh, and then the heater core is, it also has a heater core up in there. Um, so I blew everything out, used air first, and then um, I used five cans of this. Probably going to be getting the, there's a pressurized cylinder um, that you fill with wash and um, with the flush and hook up to your compressed air um, to do what this does. And in the long run, if you're going to be doing a lot, it's more economical. I've disconnected. I took the lines out, washed. Well, that just wants to stay over, so I'll just leave it that way. Um, and I'm going to clean up these hoses. There's a, You can see there's a lot of mud kicked up on them and you always want to work with everything clean so i'm going to um clean up with some scotch bright whatever clean up all of all of this get all of that dirt off the outside too there's one of the lines that connects from underneath then up under here um the same thing um these are the lines that run um, back and forth to the front. There's the suction and there's the high pressure. Um, and you can see that other line that was sitting up there on the floor goes alongside. Here's the suction line here, and this goes right up into the uh, evaporator. Um, and here's the um, and these are the lines for the for the heat. So same thing. Now what I did is um, it takes. Uh, probably two to three cans um, to, and it, it's easier to start at this end and blow out that way because uh, towards the front, because on the front there's multiple connections and you have to plug it up and uh, so it, so you can get everything to flow this way. Um, so anyhow, you take your <laughs> And take your can and same thing hook it up to both of those I'm gonna go ahead and take these off since I'm getting ready to I need to blow this out again with air uh, I ran a good bit of fluid through it and you just uh, you know from up from back here you just uh, hook hook up hook up your can 
in there and then kind of just watch up front and you'll finally see and hear the stuff running out up there and then you go ahead and put the uh and put the compressed air and and blow it out um i'll also be cleaning up the, that hose um so up front we're gonna do the same and do the same thing and here's some of those connections i was talking about uh you got this here honestly what i did was made sure i had two pair of gloves on of nitrile gloves stuck my finger up in here uh and put the can here uh oh, there comes the sun gonna make everything difficult and blew it out and it is tricky doing it by yourself to, to manage how to hold the can the nozzle in press the button and plug the other hole and the same thing with um this high pressure line um there's the new condenser i mean it's not a lot to show about in r and r of this you <laughs> look at the brackets take it off and then put it back in just make sure it's um there's in the rubber mounts um below there's little rectangles recessed re rectangles for a similar shape on the bottom just make sure you got it in there um the evaporator does hold um quite a bit and um you know you put it put it in blow it all you know blow it all out you get a lot of oil to to come out and you just keep pumping until it comes out uh you know keep spraying this stuff till it comes out clean and then follow it up with air so i'm gonna uh hit it hit it on all directions again with with air and uh hook up all uh hook up my rear lines get all that rear stuff out of the way so then i can just work up front i'll replace all the o-rings you know, oil them up with the pag oil and put all that back together and then I'll just have work to do up here, fill the compressor, and um, put. The, I'm gonna fill the compressor, put the lines on it, and feed the lines up from underneath, and then um, move that, uh, like I said, with this fan shroud loose, you can pretty much just scooch it up in there without having to take this completely out, without having to remove the fan, that's just extra work and this stuff is flexible enough you can get it all through there so um oh let's see also here's the uh here's the manifold that goes on the compressor so i'm going to clean this up with scotch bright i'm going to clean um, these threads up with this and of course everything will get blown back out that's our high pressure port. Here's our high pressure switch. I'll be replacing that as well as the low pressure switch. So you want everything uh, clean. Um, you know, public enemy number one of honestly anything is water and dirt. Uh, whether it's, you know, a house <laughs> or um, an engine or anything, uh, impurities, contaminants, and moisture and dirt ruin everything. Uh, but you want everything, so when you handle it, you put something together, and your hands should not get dirty when you're putting something together. Everything should be clean. So anyhow, uh, I'll clean all this up, and I'll show that. And um, uh, let's see, next video will probably show all the connectors in the rear put together and putting the oil back in in the compressor and I'll highlight that as well. Have the fittings all cleaned up. Um, just a little bit of combination of some red scotch bright and a, a brass brush gently on all 
the fittings. I cleaned up the, uh, oh, and crud cutter. Crud cutter works great. You know, just try to keep it so nothing gets in the lines. Keep your fingers over the ends or, you know, if you have caps, do whatever. Uh, a little bit of scotch bright uh, on there. And, you know, cleaned up the, the rubber. Uh, you know, this you can't do much about. It's just going to deteriorate unless you have another piece to put around it. It's to just keep it from chafing, rubbing, or insulating it. I can't remember exactly what that is up against. Um, and the, the manifold side here. Just some red scotch bright, gently. And right there where the bolt goes in and, and the end. Again, you want it, um, you know, clean, not only for it operating, uh, not getting any contaminants. See, this is all that rubber from, from that right there. Um, but just so when you handle it, I'll have to look and see if I've got another something I can put over that. And there we have it. I'm just doing some more blowing out of the lines right now. Making sure I get all the flush out of there and then we'll be O-ringing, re-O-ringing all those connections. Uh, and then, then generally what you do is you carefully get behind these with a pick and you know like either an angled an angled pick like a uh 45 or so degree angle pick maybe even a straight one gently get behind there pull them up and put them on a get a clean sheet of paper and then you start laying out your new one size them up oil them up and then just roll them into place you know working from the back to the front so uh, that will be next to get the rear evaporator out of the uh, housing for this 04 E350 uh, XL Super Duty van requires some aggressive gentleness, if that makes any sense. Um, I really couldn't find much info online and I do not have the manuals uh, for this, but... Um, you have to get this out in order to change the expansion valve and um, this one even being very careful this one is a little bit bent so this is the original one that's on there um, everything's loose now uh, and I'll have to bend it gently back into place um, to get it out it sits it sits right in here in this box uh, take a knife and cut this ceiling foam right here. There are two uh, screws with an eight millimeter wrench size on them, eight millimeter head that go up under there. Um, undo those screws for the heater core and you know just be careful and look around and you'll find any place else uh, basically it's held together with a uh with a glue um so i'll put a few dabs of rtv uh around it when i put it back together and um we'll put some um foil duct tape over it so i'll rtv it and clamp it um to get this fitting was stuck stuck. Um, even with a back wrench, I couldn't get the right leverage and angle to get this off without, even with padding and putting another piece of uh, protective metal across there, it was just too dangerous that this something was gonna just move too quick. Uh, so what I ended up doing was, since it had already, when I was trying to get it off with wrenches, it had already bent a little bit, it actually, this this one here came off nice and easy. You know, again, back wrench there. I put this upside down, uh, took the capillary tube out of the way, put this upside down uh, in a vise uh, like this. And right near 
had the jaws, uh, had this in the vise right near the edge of the jaws, and then was able to, so I clamped that into the vise upside down. So this cleared and it cleared everything else and was able to um, loosen, loosen that nut to get the expansion valve off. So you need to get that off for two reasons. You've got to, uh, you got to blow out um, and you can't really blow it clean with um, the expansion valve. It's just too much of a restriction. And you're wanting to change the valve anyhow. And I noticed when, even before I pulled this apart, the, uh, the door, the mode door, the little lever for it, where ever it is on, on the servo down there, that was off. So, um, this thing probably would have been stuck in, um, heat mode anyhow for the back, um, which might be a thing with these things. So, um, I'll test out that servo, um, I've got this evaporator mostly blown out. I'll let it sit a while and blow it some more. And then expansion valve back on, evaporator in, remount that, and um, new O-rings and everything, and put her back to get, uh, get this back together, get all my hoses on the back end. I've got the whole system blown out front to back, and that took a long time. I mean, a long, long time of a lot of blowing to get all the liquid flush out of it. So just, just be prepared. Um, I can see why so many folks um, like just eliminate the rear AC because it takes, you know, it increases the volume from four, it's like 20 more ounces of refrigerant, lots more oil, um, and just it's a lot of work. But if the AC is working, I'm sure this is going to be nice. So it's never really worked in this van. So um, that's where we are right now. Um, probably a good time to stop for the day. So I'm blowing the components out. Here is the respirator or any, you know, not necessarily this one, but these are like readily, these are easily readily obtainable more so than some of the others. Home Depot Lowe's generally has these, um, but you want something with, um, charcoal cartridges and that you can also pre-filters this is will prevent any uh volatile organic compounds from getting into your lungs and you want to wear these right here um so i'm going to blow this out a little more and then that will be it for the day